No one can count on a more warm-hearted welcome to Canada than Mr. Eisenhower. Greeting the President and his wife on this very special occasion was Her Majesty in her capacity as Queen of Canada. The head of the United States was in Montreal on a truly historic mission, accompanied by his new Secretary of State, Mr. Herter, to share in the official opening of the St. Lawrence Seaway. That joint project of Canada and America is bringing to international trade a stimulus which cannot yet be estimated. Many thousands of people massed along the route from the airport to the St. Lawrence River, for throughout Canada, millions are conscious that they witness the beginning of one of the greatest peaceful achievements of this day and age. Inaugural speeches were to be made by both Queen and President. Her Majesty said that the dream of a fully navigable St. Lawrence was fulfilled. More than all this, it is a magnificent monument to the enduring friendship of our two nations and to their partnership in the development of North America. That partnership is most agreeably symbolized, Mr. President, in the fact that you and I have joined together to perform this ceremony today. This was the soil of French Canada, a fact to which the President made early allusion. And because we are in this uh, beautiful part of Canada, where French is principally spoken, will you permit me a single halting sentence of my Western Prairie brand on that language? Je suis très heureux de me trouver, retrouver parmi vous, au Canada où il y a un an. Je fais un si agréable séjour. In the reasonable resolution of the acute international problems of our time rests the single hope for world prosperity and happiness in peace with justice for all. Thank you very much. The ceremonial opening of the seaway was to take place on board the Royal Yacht Britannia. She was about to steam to the St. Lambert Lock, which joins the great harbour of Montreal to La Prairie Basin, the first leg of the new highway. Timbers from a lock of the Lachine Canal, which the seaway makes obsolete, formed a symbolic gate. And as Britannia sailed through it, the St. Lawrence Seaway was formally and officially opened. A waterway of 2,300 miles invites the shipping of the world. Fireworks exploded into patterns of the Canadian and US flags. For Mr. Diefenbaker, Premier of Canada, it was perhaps the most memorable day of his political life. St. Lambert Lock raises ships 15 feet, the first part of the climb of 600 feet to far off Duluth, at the most western shore of Lake Superior. More than 250 years ago, men of vision aspired to a seaway which would bring ocean-going vessels into the heart of the North American continent. Now, after a little more than four years of work on the epic scale, the vision is translated into accomplished fact. That evening, the city of Montreal gave a dance in the Queen's honor. The mayor, Monsieur Fournier, escorted Her Majesty into the presence of 2,000 happy guests. He gave her an opportunity to speak to many of the people of the great city, which was celebrating one of the most memorable days of its history. The dancing was begun by the Queen, partnered by the Mayor. Later, the floor was quite inadequate for the number wanting to make use of it, but the ball rounded off a day crowded with unforgettable incidents. Canadians were justly proud that this day had seen the historic opening of the St. Lawrence Seaway.